Hey guys, you're watching Gatsky, the place to be to develop your creative skills. And in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how you can create cinemagraphs all in Photoshop. Now, if you've never heard of a cinemagraph, you've probably seen them on Instagram. It's where you have like a really still image, a really still image, a still image. And then like the hair might be moving, just the hair, or you've got like an ocean. Everything is still, but the water's moving. You have a field, everything is still but like the grass is moving. So you have a still image and then one element of that image is really subtly moving. It's incredibly powerful and they just look, they look super awesome and you can create them in Photoshop. So today we're gonna do that and it's gonna be a really basic one. So we'll jump into Photoshop now and you can see I have an image of a subject smoking a joint. And over here, you can see I've actually opened a video file in Photoshop. Now, if you don't see the timeline down here, just go up to window, down to timeline, and that will appear. Sometimes it appears automatically if you import a video file. And you can see I can scrub through this with the playhead, and I've just got some smoke on a black background. Now, the brilliant thing about particles like this, whether it's fire, lightning, smoke, dust, whatever it is, if you have that particle effect on a black background, you can easily just switch the blending mode from normal to lighten or screen or something similar, and it will blend onto your image. It's fantastic and it's so easy to create these kinds of effects. So I've got the smoke here on a black background. And if I go over to the layers panel, you can see it has a video symbol next to the thumbnail itself. So if I right click on this and select duplicate layer, and change the document from itself to my tutorial document. And then click OK. You can duplicate a layer from one document into another open document. So you can see it appears here. It still has that video symbol, but if I try to do anything with it or edit it, it will need to convert it to a smart object, which is totally fine. So if I go up to edit and down to free transform, now, when you do this for the first time, it will probably say, hey, if you want to carry on editing this, it will convert to a smart object. Just click yes or okay, that's totally fine. And now what I can do in, is resize this video. And you can't see a preview here. So just double click to set that transformation once you've resized it or press return. And the first thing I'm gonna do is, as I mentioned earlier, change that blending mode from normal to something like screen. So if I scrub through the timeline now, you can see the smoke is playing. So we'll go for, well, we'll find the start of the smoke, something like this. And then I can click on this layer and move it. And we'll scrub through. I think the size is probably about right. So you can scrub to the point at where the smoke is largest and where it begins, and then use that to kind of go up here, go free transform again and you can basically adjust the size, adjust the rotation, anything you need to do to make sure that your particles line up with where they're going to be in your image. So if I just zoom in, so we can see here that she's lighting the joint, we have the fire from the lighter. Now I want this to be, the smoke to be coming off of the joint after she's lit it. So what I need to do is actually just create a new layer and we'll do that from the bottom of the layers panel. And I'm just gonna use the eyedropper tool to sample my background color. It definitely looks like black, but just to be sure, I'm gonna sample it. And then grab the brush tool, one of Photoshop's soft round pressure opacity brushes. These are one of the default brushes in Photoshop. And I'm just gonna brush out the flame. So the smoke is going to appear after the joint has been lit. So we'll move this down here. And again, what I can do is just scrub through to see how the smoke moves around. So you can see here that I've just painted that black on this layer, but it's not showing as I scrub through the video. So in the timeline, this is my layer two here. So let's give this a name. We'll call this flame cover. You can call it anything you like. And you can see that is this here. So I need to move this along so it runs for the entire duration of my animation. Now I can zoom out of the timeline here just so I can see everything. So we'll bring this up. 
So for the entire duration of the smoke video playing, that flame will be covered with that little black flame cover layer that I created. Now I can actually make the overall length of this shorter. I could bring this down to like 10 seconds and I could bring both of these in and you can see it snaps. So when I export the overall animation, it will be 10 seconds long. And what I think I might do as well is if I just select the video, I'll just give this layer the name video, or we'll call this smoke video, just so I don't forget. And I'll add a layer mask. And again, using that soft feather brush, I'm just gonna feather the bottom. Because at the moment, the smoke has like a hard edge to it, a hard cut. If you look at the video here, you can see it touches the bottom edge of the canvas. So it's gonna be cut off and just feathering the bottom of that just makes it a bit softer. And I could probably just bring this down a tiny bit as well. So it's just gonna blend a lot more seamlessly. So if I bring this back, you can see the smoke is playing. So the image itself is a still photograph, but we have video playing over the top. So if I scrub back to the beginning and I can press spacebar or I can click play here to start playing the video. And you can see the smoke is rising from the joint and it's a, an incredibly quick and easy way to create a really simple but effective cinemagraph. It just adds like a bit of life to a, a still photo. And once you've done that, what you can do is go to file, down to export and render video. So you can export this as a video file. So you can give it a name, call it tutorial, export it wherever you like to the desktop. So you select your folder there. You've got lots of different video settings here. These are the ones that I'm using to just export it as a .mp4 video file, 1080p, frame rate of 30 frames a second, all that good stuff. Click render and it will export a video file. Alternatively, you can export as an animated GIF by going to file, down to export and selecting save for web legacy. Now this might take a moment depending on how large your document is. So that actually took about 30 seconds to load up this dialog box because this is a particularly large document to create an animated GIF from. I'll probably speed that up in editing so you don't have to sit there and just look at me just standing completely still. But this is the dialog box you will see. You can see the output size here is 8.3 something something megabytes. These are the options I'm using. So we've got GIF. This is the preset from the dropdown. And what I would typically do is just deselect transparency because there is no transparency in this. You can mess around with the settings here. Colors I have at 256, so you get the maximum amount of color in your image. Although this is a black and white image, so you could drop this a bit. If you had a color image, you want to keep this as high as possible to maintain the image quality. The matte, I always have this uh, white typically. Lossy, you can probably bump this up to somewhere around 10 to 15. This will degrade the quality slightly of your image, but it will reduce the file size. So sometimes your file size will be absolutely massive, like down here. Uh, this isn't too bad. It can be a lot worse. Um, when you add color, if this image had color in it, for example, this file size would be astronomical. So lossy could be quite handy then, but also you can change the size here. So at the moment, this is, well, this is a ridiculously large GIF. So if I were to change this here and put in like a width of 800, I'm not gonna do it because it would take ages to kind of process that. But you could export this particular graphic at a size of like 800 by whatever it would be, and it would drop the file size down massively. So if you are doing GIFs, I would de definitely recommend working on smaller document sizes, uh, unless you're happy to sit through like a really long loading screen, but yeah. There we go. And you can, of course, set the loop. So you could have the GIF loop forever as well, which is a really effective thing to do with a cinemagraph. So yeah, there we go. Whoo, okay, an introduction to cinemagraph. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions or comments, or you'd like to see some cinemagraph tutorials, maybe in a bit more detail, then let me know down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.